So what is creativity? The word creativity is a troublesome word, I believe, because for so many people, the word creativity means artistic creativity. And of course, there is artistic creativity. The creativity of the, the poet, the artist, the dancer, the painter. Yes, of course. But there is also a wider creativity that we find in all fields of human endeavor. We see it in healthcare, in education, in agriculture, even in warfare. So creativity is everywhere. But the word has been hijacked by the artists. And so I might talk to a chief executive of a manufacturing company who says, I'm not creative. And what she means is, she can't sing, she can't write poetry, and when she was at school, she was hopeless at art. And yet this same chief executive is solving problems every day, is doing amazing things, being ingenious and innovative. So I proposed in my talk at TEDx in Napoli, in Italy, that we have two definitions. I suggest we have two words. A creativity to indicate artistic creativity and I creativity to indicate that kind of wider ingenuity that we find all over the world, not just in the world of arts and artists and what is known as the creative industries. Let me give you a few examples. In 1968 at the Mexico Olympics, an American athlete called Dick Fosbury won at the high jump. Until he came along, the way to jump over the bar was like hurdling. You ran straight at it and tried to jump over. But one day he came along, ran towards the bar and jumped over backwards. Wow. Nobody had ever seen this before. Is this cheating? No, it's innovation, it's creativity. It was the first time he did something new. And now, of course, the Fosbury flop, as it is known, is commonplace, it's the standard. Similarly, in shipping, this picture of a container ship is quite commonplace. You say, what's innovative about that? But until containerization was thought of, it would take weeks to, to uh, load a ship because of all the different shapes and sizes of the cargoes. That was how it used to be until somebody came along with this new idea, this new innovation. Why don't we put everything into containers in advance and then we can load the ship quickly? So commonplace today, but at the time it was a game changer, a game changing idea. And another example is Kiva.org, which is a, a voluntary organization, a not-for-profit, that helps people like this lady in the Philippines who needs a micro-loan. A loan of $100 could change her life, but she can't go to a bank, she has no credit. But Kiva organizes, through crowdfunding, microfinance loans. They might be $500 for a group to set up a, 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 a consumer cooperative or for somebody to fix their taxi. Small amounts of money that are life-changing and Kiva helps us in units of £25 online to lend collectively to people like her. It's a wonderful invention. It's an innovation. This is an example of creativity that happens in the world, not only in business, but in the world of microfinance and the voluntary sector. So how do we think? How can we think of these game-changing ideas? How, we, how can we be as innovative as those people were? How can we think up these new innovations? Well, there are techniques for creative thinking. And one of the things I do with businesses is to run workshops in creative thinking with senior executives and senior managers, working with them to generate new ideas for their business. Ideas that can revolutionize their business perhaps, 
set up totally new businesses, or ideas that can simply improve piece by piece the way they work. And then to do that, we can use various techniques. One of the techniques is called back to front thinking. And so this slide is not a mistake. This back to front thinking is to take a problem and instead of trying to solve it, let's see if we can make it worse. What would we do to make the problem worse? It sounds crazy. People look at me and say, are you sure, David? Is this what we're doing this afternoon? But yes, and in thinking that way, in a back to front way, we can make the problem worse, and yet in doing so, realize what we must do to actually improve. So these are games, but serious games, for business innovation. And through these kinds of games, we can think up amazing new ideas. Another one is the, the pre-mortem. We all know what a post-mortem is. When somebody dies, we check why. When a project fails, the manager calls in the staff, hey guys, what went wrong? What did we do wrong? What can we learn? We do a post-mortem. A pre-mortem is to anticipate what might go wrong. Where the manager says, I'm looking into the future and we failed. It's a disaster. What happened? Let's predict what we did to make it fail. And in doing that, we can identify the areas of danger, the risks that we can fix in advance. And so although it sounds negative, it's actually a very positive way to make sure that the project succeeds. And a third example is called reframing the question. To ask the question in a different way. Part of my job as a consultant isn't always to know the answers, but I certainly know the questions. And sometimes if we ask the question in a different way, we can come up with new ideas.